my five pillars are sales, marketing, operations, people, and mindset. Every business growth challenge falls within one of those umbrellas. Now we need to go unpack that, right? We isolate the issue, we isolate the pillar, and then we unpack within the pillar. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky here, and today do I have somebody very special on the line with us. I'm with the wonderful Corey Mosley. Welcome to the show, Corey. Hey, Rick, thank you. Super excited to be with you and all your listeners. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you and I were just briefly touching on uh, some of the topics we're going to be covering today, but uh, just for everybody who uh, doesn't know much about Corey, let me give you a bit of a background. He's an award-winning business strategist, speaker, coach, and for the last two decades, he's been dedicated to helping entrepreneurs, small business owners, and corporations grow. So we're going to be talking a lot about that, but we're also going to be talking about how he's authored two books and a long list of other exciting uh, topics. Corey, Um, I love to just start off by learning uh, a bit about my guests. It's obligatory. We we need to you know (laughs) separate the separate the business, which is really just the mechanics. We know that much of this uh, doesn't change too much, but the thing I find that is unique is the individual. So I'd love to start off by learning uh, where is home for you. Yeah, everybody's got a unique story. So I'm I'm based in the U.S. uh, in a little state called Virginia Mm -hmm. uh, is where uh, is where I'm from. So. Um, that's where we, you know, do most of our business, and um, that's that's kind of that's kind of our scope. We we do work with our clients all over the country, yep. um, as well as Canada too. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, given the basis of your business, uh, would you have the opportunity to glo- go global and serve those online, serve others online? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, we run, you know, we run a coaching program and a training program uh, for business owners so that really doesn't matter you know we're not we're not uh, restricted by uh, the lines there's a currency exchange right yes. Once you get out of the US, but, <laughs> but other than that uh, it's the same fundamental business principles that we believe in sales marketing operations people or mindset all of your business growth issues are, are going to fall under one of those umbrellas and i'd love to talk about the pillars of uh, that later on which you have outlined on your your website now in virginia what's one of the uh, major landmarks that uh, people would know um so well <laughs> depends on the history right okay. so there, there was the uh, headquarter of the south uh, in, in terms of uh, in terms of those times but uh, you know, our, our moniker is Virginia is for lovers. Yes. Uh, we've got the world famous Virginia Beach. We have a, you know, a lot of museum activity here. And, and uh, I'm sure there's some official things I should know that I probably don't. <laughs> now, let, You're not alone. <laughs> full, full disclosure, Rick, I live in Virginia. I'm from New Jersey. Right. I so, was going uh, to ask you about that. So you, you, you've not always lived there, obviously. No, no, absolutely not. I was, I was born in uh, I was born in New Jersey, and uh, and then ended up in Virginia. Went back to New Jersey, and then came back to Virginia. So yeah, uh, that's that's been the yo yo for me. For, for <laughs> a bit transient, uh, like many of us. Yeah, I I also like to to learn a bit about your early days growing up, yeah. and we all yeah. have some fun times. We have some struggles that we remember. But I'd love to bring out one of your most fondest experience growing up as a child. What, what can you remember? Well, I will tell you, listen, I'm a professional speaker, so believe me, we've got our story already ready to go. And so, so I'm, I, I'll, I'll hop right into that. You know, um, I always start by, by talking about my mother and thanking my mother. She's still alive. Uh, but I, I thank her because most of a child's belief systems are shaped, uh, you know, at that adolescent level. And what my mother did, which I give her a lot of credit for, uh, but I'm also honest by saying she wasn't doing it on purpose. But what she did for me was <laughs> she never created restrictions. Yeah. So, Rick, there was never a scenario where you couldn't have that dream. You couldn't believe you could do that. Uh, there was nothing I, I couldn't do or, or you know, I couldn't be. I didn't have those restrictions. A lot of parents, unfortunately, impart their belief system, particularly if it's a negative belief system or not as an open belief system, they impart that on their children or they try to tell their children what they should be, right? I.e., yeah, yeah. you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a lawyer, an engineer, 
Um, so she didn't do any of those things, which really gave me an open playing field. And I will have to tell you and your listeners, I'm probably the only person you ever meet. We had a show in the States called L.A. Law. Yes, um, we have that it was here. on in the 80s. Okay, yep. So We're getting the reruns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm probably the only person you ever meet that at, that at 13, my favorite show was L.A. Law. Oh, wow. So really? I, I, I thought I was going to be an attorney. That's what I wanted to be. I, I watched him on TV. I watched, uh, I wanted to be Arnie Becker, the divorce attorney that had the uh, great Brioni suits and drove the Bentley. Of course. And that was going to be my deal. Now, the problem with that, Rick, is I went into a law program at 14, and my mentor uh, always looked worn out and tired, drove a beat up Mazda, uh, was $200,000 in debt you know, to school and law school, mm -hmm. and had the grand idea that he would just work 100 hours a week for the next 10 years and hopefully become partner. Oh, awesome. I quickly <laughs> learned I did not want to be an attorney anymore. <laughs> it so, be became a parent. Yes. So at 18 years old, I entered the auto industry because the auto industry was an area where you, you know, quote unquote, have unlimited income. Um, I was a communicator. I'm a talker, as you can probably naturally see. So this, so if when you take 18, unlimited income, and I get to talk all day, it kind of was a, a match made in heaven. The bonus that I had, Rick, was this was just about the time that the internet was coming to be as far as automotive going yep. online, yep. looking at cars, submitting leads. So if you are the youngest person working at a, a car dealership and you know how to turn the computer on and the Internet's been invented, you now de facto become in charge of all of that stuff. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> that's what happened. I became in charge of that stuff, and over a few short years, I learned some techniques and tactics and some strategies that worked. I formed a consulting company uh, that we took to seven figures. And really what I learned after working with both auto dealers and manufacturers, I signed my first uh, Volkswagen's big over there where you are. Uh, I signed my first corporate client. They were my first corporate client at the age of 27. Yep. So after years of doing that, helping organizations, big organizations make millions of dollars, uh, helping auto dealers, I said, you know what? I need to be doing this for the rest of you know the rest of the business community, and that's basically what we've been doing ever since. That was the genesis. I was actually going to ask you how you got involved, and uh, you've just simply revealed it for us. Now, um, yeah. you speak fondly of of your mum and uh, yeah. how she's uh, helped you fly, as it were. Um, but d at, as you were growing up, there must have been other formative figures in your life, other mentors, may maybe other male figures. Um, who who was around in your life uh, that helped form the person you are today? Do you think? Um, I would I would run this in two parallels. I would say on the personal side, uh, you know, my uncle had a great impact on me uh, in terms of look uh, understanding, uh, and he's still with me to yep. this day. Yep. Um, of understanding, uh, looking looking the part, feeling the part. Uh, he got me interested in things that are, you know, my, my interest in BMW, you know, I wrote a letter, my grandma still has it, that, you know, when I was 12, I wrote, I will drive a BMW, yeah. um, I will, you know, that was an influence from my uncle, he drove a BMW, he, you know, he always was well-groomed, so my, uh, you know, uh, very rarely will you see me in any kind of disheveled state, right, um, and you're never going to see it in public uh, from that <laughs> standpoint, so, you know, he taught me those things. Smell good. Wear cologne. I'm, you know, I have 30 bottles of cologne because of my own. I blame it for a lot of my, Thanks, a, a lot of my good and bad habits, right? So, yep. on the personal side, uh, uh, my my grandfather, my grandparents, they, those were strong influences um, on on the personal side. Being a giver, giving of my time, wanting to help people, wanting to do things that don't always have a re, a, a financial return to them. It, yep. That came from my family. Yeah. On the business side. You know, I would, you know, that really was a, a, a big trial and error period. But uh, there was there was a guy named Bob Friedman who since passed on, mm -hmm. and uh, he had he was a retired um, CPA that was in private practice, so like family office kind of stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So he had retired from the big firm, and he had a small office. When I was 21, I had a small office. You know, co-working spaces are really big now. Um, you know, their we works and those things are popular. So, not before it was in vogue to do that. We had those kind of private office spaces, and he, for whatever reason, took to took a liking to me. 
um, and would just give me advice, give me advice on you know managing finances, give me advice on clients, and mm-hmm. and actually brought me you know at twenty, I'm gonna say I, was, I had to be twenty 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 one, brought me one of his clients, and uh, we had to save their million dollar contract. So here I am, this you know it was Y two K. They were a, yeah, uh, yeah. a IT firm. They had a big contract with what was Bank of New York at the time, or Mellon Bank. I'm sure those names are familiar to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had to do this RFP, and they had to do all this stuff. And he knocks on my door, and he says, "Do you know anything about this stuff?" And first rule of business: always say yes. Yeah. <laughs> Even if and you then don't, you figure it out, right? <laughs> I don't have so the answer, Bob, but I'm going to find it. <laughs> whatever it is, Bob, I can help you with it. And um, and that it was such an interesting thing because what I found, and I always stress this to people, is Rick, you always want to look at the areas where you do think things come natural to you. Yeah. So me being in a meeting and going through these areas and helping them map out the strategy was there's no school that could have taught me that. There was a there was just a natural skill set of diagnosing and digesting a problem and coming up with a solution. And it was so easy for me to do that work. And one of the things he taught me was to pay attention to the moments where none of it feels like work and those are the things you should be doing. So uh, yeah. talking to you right now is so easy. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you have guests who are nervous and they come on and and you know they're trying to talk about their stuff and whatever. You're trying to extract things out of them. But it's so easy because this is natural. Yeah. Working with a business owner, coaching, these things are so easy because they were natural and he helped me see that. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I am absolutely loving this call and the fact that you've mentioned how easy this is just makes it, it much even even more easy to get some great content uh, through to the listeners who are made up of small to medium sized business owners, entrepreneurs who are just starting on their journey, Corey, so mm-hmm. thank you very much. Now, you strike me as somebody who um, has an attitude of gratitude. Um, how important is gratitude in life and in business? So, you know, I subscribe to the school of um, thankful, never satisfied. Yeah. So, so I can all I, thankful for everything I have, thankful for everything uh, that I'm able to do, thankful to get up every day, but still wanting more. Now, wanting more, not being born from greed but wanting to help more people right we're on you've got listeners all over the globe here mm-hmm. i want to maybe they can't do direct business with me for for economic reasons for across the pond whatever doesn't matter mm-hmm. right if, if i can share something today uh that could be valuable to impact them that's super important so i'm a big believer in that and that goes back to the origin of conversation about my grandmother my grandmother was a giver to this day she's a she's just a giver she wants to give uh, in any way that she can and she instilled that in me um to do that so that's why you know i'm here and i'm, I'm a big believer in uh in gratitude now rick i think people need to be honest with themselves also right so i don't i you know there's there's uh ranges and levels right so i'm not you know I'm not up at 5 a.m., uh, you know, spending 20 minutes, you know, praying about gratitude. That's not my deal. Yep. Uh, and that's great for people who do it. That's fine. Uh, but yep. that's not my deal, right? I find my way. I, I say thank you every day. I, I, I say my message. And um, I participate in charity boards and, and different things like that. So mm-hmm. I continue uh, to give. Yeah, fantastic. Now, um, I know that education must be high up there in the priority list for you. I notice a, a range of books behind you. Um, what is your, I guess, your modus operandi when it comes to learning and how, how important is ongoing education for you personally? Well, ongoing education is, is a top priority for me because I have business owners all over the country who are looking to me. Yeah. So part of what we do with my academy is becoming the single source i think so many business owners become overwhelmed because they they've and i'm not a guru but they've got eight gurus that they're following they, they're in eight programs they're in eight facebook groups they're in eight courses they're in all this stuff and they become actual full-time students that don't run their business so i become in a lot of ways not only a coach but an educator where we do our training on the topics that matter most you know in the current business climate so i I have to be. I'm reading my Business Insider. I'm reading my uh, uh, Bloomberg's. I'm looking at, uh, you know, I've got audio books 
you know, we've got shortcut, you know, yep, shortcut yep. versions that are out there. I'm immersed in all of that because people are counting on me to be able to curate you know, I have no problem getting credit, giving credit. If it's if I've learned something from somebody, mm -hmm. I'm going to pass that along. But I, I am a curator of information as much as I am of original thought. So people are counting on me. So I have no choice. You know, when COVID hit, people were turning to me. Yeah. You know, what do we do with the, you know, in, in the states, right? The PPP and the money. And I had to research that, stay on top of that. People were counting on me. So it is part of my DNA uh, to be consuming information and learning information constantly. Corey, I, I just had something come to my mind. In terms of the curriculum that you this, you share and coach um, businesses on, mm -hmm. um, do you, does it talk about um, time away from work and uh, relaxation, recuperation? Do you, do you have a focus on that at all? Oh, well, listen, self-care is the new buzzword for that, right? Mm. So um, it used to be work-life balance, used to be the buzzword, now self-care. But... Uh, I, I mean, I think that's super important. Now, the truth, though, is that a, I, I, my best friend works for the Postal Service in the United States. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we laugh because I say at 501, he's not, he has no thought about his job, right? <laughs> clock off, clock off. That, that, yep, he, he clocks out, and he's not thinking about work till 8.30 a.m. the next day. Yeah. Entrepreneurs and business owners, we don't have that luxury. So it's not so much a balance as it is your your lifestyle is also your business. Just how you would just as if you would plan a meeting or or go meet with a client or work on something and block that time, you too need to simply block that time to not be working. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you're doing and it has to be, and that has to be included in it. So yeah. Rick, you have no problem finding me at you finding me getting a massage or a facial or I'm not I'm, I'm secure <laughs> on my masculinity I get my toes done very nice uh, very nice my wife does not want crusty feet rubbing on her <laughs> yours too hey um, <laughs> I need to go and get a pedicure I think now now <laughs> I'd love to ask you uh, when you're you're doing what you do you obviously love what you do otherwise you wouldn't yes. be doing it but what's the one thing that you that stands out for you the most the thing that gives you the most reward and enjoyment Oh, the wins. When mm. someone, you know, we had a client the other day that literally called me that sent me a video crying. He's crying in the car because uh, he just closed his largest deal and he got the client to pay up front for the year. Congratulations. Um, so, so awesome. yeah. So he was, uh, you know, so he was just so overcome with emotion. He's literally crying and sending me the video and thanking me because we worked on it. We reworked his pitch and his proposal and how he priced and packaged his services. He sells consulting services. So, um, and he and he followed the directions, and that was the result. So getting that, or getting uh, you know getting those type of messages, hey, we just closed this deal, or you know, yeah, Corey, you told me to have patience, and you know, I, I I'm glad I listened to you because now this happened. It's the wins. I mean, that's what's super super exciting for me. Excellent. I um I always think about uh, strategy, and uh, sometimes I talk with people who get really caught up in their mind about. Um, strategy and they and they find it difficult to process can you um, give us your take on what strategy is and how it can be simplified so those who are not experienced in in doing any of it can understand it and get some effect from it I mean really to I mean, simplify it it's you know what are you going to do mm -hmm. right if you were to really break down strategy in a in a non-academic way right yep. strategy is what what am I going to do to get the outcome that I want Right, so you want to increase sales by 25%. Well, the strategy is simply what are we going to do to do that? Well, I'm going to increase marketing. I'm going to market over here. I'm going to put this kind of offer out. I'm going to raise my prices. It's the strategy is filling in the what to get what you want. And ultimately, I always tell people sometimes you just have to dumb everything down to the ridiculous, as we say. Oh yeah. So get get very granular and chunk. Whether you know some people call it chunking, yep. but People get overwhelmed by the big picture. They go, oh, I want to make a million dollars. Okay, before you make a million dollars, you got to make $10. Then you got to make $1,000. Then you got to make $10,000. So I think um, being able to, I, I, I'm a believer in, I, I teach micro goals, right? Yep. Um, and a reward. So I'll, I'll give you a nugget, an acronym that I use. It's CAPI, C-A-P-I, Celebrate, Assess, Plan, Implement. 
that's excellent. I um, I sit here and I think to myself, um, you've talked about all of these things that you're doing. Um, mm. I also read in your bio, uh, which is very, very exciting, uh, you referenced the new economy. Can yes. you explain to the audience uh, what that actually means from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, things have changed, right? Mm. Everything, Everything's changed. The rules have changed. Uh, brand loyalty has changed, you know. Um, you know, people that used to stick with one thing are now open to, to other things. Things that used to be institutional uh, have now become disrupted. And yep. things that you didn't think you would do, you know, uh, products that you would consume, where you would buy from, how you would buy, has all changed. If you owned a restaurant and did not uh, have online ordering or ignored the online ordering when the pandemic hit, you got punished. I call it punishment. Yeah. The market punished you because you weren't prepared. So now you have to rethink. People have to rethink what their business model was. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in the I'm in the speaking world. Many of my people. Uh, many of the people in the speaking world, I'm literally, I'm actually currently the president of the National Speakers Association for the state of Virginia, and I work with speakers who relied on traveling, relied on doing 80 dates. They traveled the world. A good friend of mine, Scott McCain, he was, he's comes to Australia, he was coming to Australia every year to speak and things of that nature, and of course, that stopped. Most so, stopped, didn't it? Right? Now, that's when an entrepreneur really gets excited, because those guys didn't go get under the covers and, and turn off the lights. They reinvented themselves. They said, okay, great. How, how can we, everybody, everybody's on Zoom now. How can we uh, repurpose our content? How can we start new programs? How can we create value that then creates revenue for us? And that's what people, that's what people have been doing. See, the pandemic, you, it, if I may, the pandemic yeah. has uh, affected people's uh, lives uh, economically, psychologically, and I wonder, um, in the darker times in our mind, um, what yep. do you say to those people who are struggling? And do you see any? Do you see brighter days ahead? Yeah. So I, I believe, I believe wholeheartedly a couple of key things. If you're in business, sales should be up. Your customers should be raving fans. Your team should be evangelists, and cash should be flowing. If it, those things are not happening, it's because of a breakdown in one of those five areas that I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. So if you're struggling right now in your business, you've got to attack that piece. It's not wait for the market. It's you've got to come at it differently. You had a, a event hall where well, you need to think about how you can add virtual programs. I attended a virtual wedding. That wedding, that 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 wedding planner, that organization didn't just give up because no one, a hundred people, couldn't come anymore to their event hall. They leveraged technology. They learned other ways to charge for their services. Maybe not at the same margin. So I don't want anybody. Right? I don't believe anybody should be down in the dumps right now. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. no matter what your segment is, everybody is using technology or coming up with different ways to pivot. We started a coaching program dead in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, wow. I didn't go, oh, man, nobody has any money, uh, and no, nobody can afford this or anything like that. People needed help. People needed answers. And we, we went completely virtual and started uh, and started a program and turned that program into a six-figure uh, business for us very quickly. And then now, you know, continue to scale it. But I don't, I don't accept the, oh, the, I kept. That's what I keep. Oh, oh, the pandemic. Oh, you're not a victim. Oh, pandemic. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't accept that attitude. Yeah. I mean, I just don't accept it mm -hmm. because that is giving you an opportunity, and it's not a platitude. Oh, don't make excuses. Be tough. I'm not <laughs> saying that. No, no. I, I, I'm saying that there's too many people winning. There's not enough people who. There's not enough people who are in trouble to then say trouble is the prevailing issue, because if you looked left. Every time somebody said, oh, COVID to me, I said, well, what about these four or five people over here that are crushing it right now? Yeah. What's the difference? The difference is they are they are pivoting and executing in a way that you are not right now. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity. That's about adaption, innovation, yeah. and looking for the new opportunity uh, because there certainly is a lot of it, isn't there? 
Um, yes. I'd love to uh, talk about your speaking experiences because I know a lot of people struggle with it um, and they, they get scared by the, you know, the classic public speaking. Has that changed? Yeah. Has that dynamic changed for um, when you go online and do, do talks? Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I think people who are, uh, you, you'll find this hard to believe, but I also err on the side of extrovert. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, no. Yeah, I know. I know. Nobody, nobody <laughs> believes. It. Nobody believes that. But come, show up at a networking event and watch me, and you'll see I'm completely extroverted. You were I will not talk to anybody that doesn't talk to me yeah. first. Um, I, I'm completely. That's just a complete thing. So, um, so I don't know. I don't know that this has changed. Maybe it's allowed people to um, feel freer to talk because they don't have the audience here right now i mean i feed off that i feed off that energy i mean i have to put myself in the state i mean you see my energy is coming across no, i can feel it you know, yeah, yeah but so imagine if there were 500 people in this room. oh yeah there's nobody in this room right now right so imagine if there were 500 people so i i think i think it has given some people ways to get more comfortable because they're not looking at people and then now you have things i don't know i don't know if it's global yet but you have things like clubhouse um yes. now that are uh voice only right so now you got some guy in his bathrobe just waxing poetic <laughs> uh on, on on the line you know so i think um I don't know that it's changed people's communication skills, but maybe it has created a more you know safe harbor for them to uh, to get involved. Thank you for sharing. I'm loving this call, Corey. Yeah. Some, we could go in so many directions. This is a very deep and expansive topic, um, sales, marketing, mindset, speaking, all the yeah. rest of it. Now, I would love to uh, pivot, if we might, and, and talk about your the five pillars in some, uh, I guess, greater level of detail. Could you share, yeah. um, again, what they are and what they mean to your clients? Yeah, 100%. So my five pillars are sales, marketing, operations, people, and mindset. Every business growth challenge falls within one of those umbrellas, right? So, uh, you know, we're not getting enough conversions. People aren't, we're not getting enough leads. We're not getting, okay, well, that's obviously a function under marketing. Now we need to go unpack that, right? We isolate the issue, we isolate the pillar, and then we unpack within the pillar. Is it is it your marketing message? Are you marketing to the wrong people? Is it your branding? Then we go and we work and we kind of work that siphon to to then pinpoint the issue, and then we take some corrective measures to to fix it. Yeah, fantastic. Because there's a lot of time that I have personally wasted in my life trying to work out yeah. a lot of these things on my own. What do you say to somebody who is just starting out, who is young, and has an opportunity to fast track their success? Do you do you think it's wise for them to invest or try to do it the hard way? Yeah, I, I am not. I I am not a proponent of DIY. I'm not a proponent of being the, as they say, the chief, the cook, the bottle washer, oh, yeah. the everything. Mm -hmm. That that's that that's not my deal. Um, I, you know. So I think that I would rather people be better prepared, fund funds wise, yep. before coming to the market. Um, you know, work your job, save your money, then launch your business, uh, versus. Uh, you know, I just got to break free and launch my business and I've got $500 in the bank, right? <laughs> Not going to happen. Right? Now, oh, Corey, if I just had, because if you just had money, trust me, that doesn't always solve the issue. Um, that's why lottery winners, the average lottery winner is bankrupt uh, within seven years of winning the lottery because it wasn't just the lack of funds that created their problem, right? You still, it's still a decision. It's still strategy. It's still tactical stuff. So young or old people coming into the market, you know, need to be prepared because Rick, I'm not I'm not on, in Bali right now with my feet in the sand <laughs> with my laptop while my Stripe account just makes ding, a lot ding, of ding, noise ding, ding. on my phone. <laughs> yes. I'm working. You're yes. working. Your listeners are working in their business. The candy store owner right now is making candy at their store. The landscaper is outside mowing the, mowing the lawn of the commercial property of somebody's house. We're working. Business owners are working. Yeah. So uh, it's important to have that, also have that mindset going in and be financially prepared for you know what may or may not happen because I will tell you, and this is particular probably the younger people also, but a lot of entrepreneurs, 
is this impatience factor. Oh, yeah. Instant gratitude. Right? Yeah. Oh, Corey, you're everywhere now. Uh, yeah, that only took 15 years. Yeah, the overnight success story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took 15 years to become an overnight success, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, um, because we can waste time or we can and see it as an investment. And uh, I think that really brings me to the pointy end of the call and uh, your website. So I'd love to talk a little bit about um, what that is, where people can go to find you. And because I'm sure a lot of people want to reach out to you and start working with you. So where do they go? So easy to find CoreyMosley.com, C-O-R-Y. I'm sure you'll have it on the, on the, uh, on the video, but C-O-R-Y, M-O-S-L-E-Y. CoreyMosley.com. We've got um, a 15-day business growth video series that's 100% free um, that we drip out to you. Uh, so you know, every morning at 8 a.m. at least 8 a.m. on our end, yep. uh, you get a new video for 15 days. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, and it covers each of those five pillars three times. So we go through that 15. We go through those five pillars with three videos uh, on that. So it's just a really nice and easy way to get introduced to some of my philosophies and strategies. And one of the things that I teach Rick is give value first. So that's my gift of value. Spend 15 days and decide if I know what I'm talking about or not. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. I know that you have an enrollment um, process as well. Is that to go into your core program? And is there some sort of a waiting list? How does that work? Yeah, so right now, uh, right now we have a, a wait list going. So my academy, Corey Mosley Business Academy, that's our full program where I do live training every week uh, and we do live coaching. So people come on, whatever issue they're dealing with, whatever they're stuck on, stuck, stalled, stagnant areas in their business, um, we come on live and we work on that. So we'll be reopening that probably in, in, in the next few weeks for, uh, for our spring summer. Well, that's excellent news for everybody who's on the call today. If you are stuck and you're looking for a way out, you need that guidance and you are wanting to invest your time and money wisely, I'd be certainly reaching out to Corey and his wonderful team at coreymosley.com. I'll be leaving all of the links back to that website. And with all that being said, Corey, what a wonderful call. Thank you for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. My pleasure. Glad to be with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.